our group works on epigenetics, which has to do with information that a cell remembers uh, when it divides, other than the DNA sequence itself. And so we've known for a long time that epigenetics must be very important in normal development. That we're, one way to think about this is that we have these many genes, and these genes don't just exist in a vacuum, you know, sitting there waiting to make a protein product. They're part of a genome, and that genome has a structure that involves chemical changes like DNA methylation, as well as the assembly of more complex structures within that genome that's referred to as chromatin, that's influenced by DNA methylation and also by other kinds of epigenetic marks. And those change, those, those, uh, that organization changes during development and helps to define development. And so uh, the genes themselves aren't going to tell you uh, how they're changing um, as you go from one cell type into specialized cell types uh, and what's really responsible for the um, great diversity in cell types in a complex organism like our cells. But the epigenetic landscape is, what's, that's, is what does that. And so this is the first epigenetic landscape map. It's a crude map. It's just the beginning, but at least it is the first map. Now, that map can tell us several different types of things. So one of them is... Um, we can ask um, what really is generally happening to the levels of DNA methylation. Can that help to explain why you develop different types of cells? And there were a couple really interesting discoveries that, that were unexpected uh, during, those ex during the course of those experiments. One is that we saw an enormous dynamic plasticity in DNA methylation. It wasn't some kind of linear, boring thing where this happens, then this happens, and this happens, and this happens. We saw these waves of change during the um, development of these cell types. Obviously, one immediate application is that you could use these sorts of techniques to diagnose the difference between um, uh, cells that have a greater degree of potency in generating um, you know, one cell type versus another cell type. If you take um, um, cells that were derived from blood and turn them back into stem cells, they're much more easily able to make stem cell, uh, blood cells. But if you take cells that came from, um, uh, from the skin, you know, fibroblasts, they, are, they have a much more difficult time turning into blood cells, but they can turn into other kinds of cells, so bone-like cells, for example. You might want to uh, have an incompletely reprogrammed cell type, um, like, for example, from blood that you take just to a certain point, because then you want to turn it into a different kind of blood cell, or so at least theoretically. And so, um, you know, this would be very theoretical at this point. We haven't done these kinds of experiments, but one of the natural questions that comes to, m to mind when you look at a map is, do you have to go down that road or can you take a different road, right? So when you know what the turns are, it gives you a new list of genes that you might try and influence in getting from one location to another. So you might be able to, say, take a shortcut, you know, or a detour, in a certain setting, some pathway might not be possible, and you want to go a different direction. Once you have the map, you know what you might try, at least.